the best way to to find out about um, what it means to be a fellow and what it means to to make impact is to hear it from the real life fellows. We could hear from Vitsa van der Berg, who um, is one of our fellows from the Netherlands. So my name is Vitsa van der Werf. I'm from the Netherlands originally. Uh, spent many years working in other parts of the world, uh, but entirely focused on environmental protection, conservation. In 1992, when I was nine years old, I started work as a youth ranger doing forestry work, uh, doing bird counting, and then never sort of looked back. So I have a long history in environmental work. Um, and I think one of the, you know, for me, the reasons why I became involved with the Shokan of, or we learned of them and ultimately also in 2018, two years ago, was selected as an Ashoka Fellow is because of the program we started um, only four years ago called the Sea Ranger Service. And really this Sea Ranger Service is focused um, on ocean, ocean conservation. As most of you will know, there are issues around plastic pollution. There are growing concerns around overfishing and climate change. Um, and actually, what is amazing news is that a lot of the ocean is protected, um, however, mostly on paper. So the question is, how do you then ensure that the ocean management, the actual research, the monitoring, and potentially even restoring biodiversity in the oceans, how can you build the infrastructure in a smart and cost-effective way to realize that? Because, of course, ships and people are very expensive to operate at sea. It's very difficult. Um, so how can you be more efficient about that? And the way in which we approached it is essentially looking at how that ocean domain has changed. So where there used to be fishing and maybe some big cargo ships, actually nowadays there are wind farms, um, seaweed farms, even shipwrecks are increasingly classed as cultural heritage and have to be protected and preserved. So there's all new types of work in monitoring, surveying research has emerged. And could you potentially combine this notion of work with the need to better protect the oceans. Um, and what we essentially did is we developed a program whereby we trained young people to carry out the restoration of the ocean, but at the same time they received the training to essentially train them into a maritime career. And what we trained them as is Sea Ranger. So the Sea Ranger is essentially a social innovation. Young people join our ships for a year, they carry out environmental protection and after that year they then go on and work with other maritime companies so it's it's a way to better protect the ocean but from a social perspective now what essentially happens is that initially these young people go through a boot camp training it's run by veterans from the navy there's a lot of structure and discipline a lot of training it's all about um you know supporting people in their personal development uh, we obviously also have a lot of maritime trainings a lot of sailing um, and what's really fascinating is that that it essentially is a step up for young people towards a maritime career. Almost three quarters, in fact, 72% of all the people signing up are young women, which for maritime jobs is really, really rare. So combining this notion of seafaring and maritime training with a strong sustainability uh, focus is something that also entices young people to consider a career at sea and to consider working in this industry um, you know, and help, help, help green, help make the sustainable push in this industry possible. Um, and after one year, they actually have a what's called a endorsement, which means they essentially have an official qualification as a um, as a seafarer. Now, that is the social aspect of our work. We work in some of the areas with high youth unemployment rates, um, offering young people, even that if they have no education before to essentially get kick-started into a new career path. Besides this social innovation, we also have a technical innovation. And that is that currently we operate the only sailing ship that is uh, entirely certified as an offshore work ship. And what that means is that the type of work that traditionally big, large ships would be needed to carry out, big motor ships, polluting, expensive, we are now able to carry out the same type of work, which I'll show you in a moment, with this ship that is essentially powered by wind. Um, and that means there's a lot less emissions, obviously, a lot less fuel use, it's very clean, and it's about a 30% cheaper to operate on an annual level, but it meets all the industry standards for various types of monitoring, research, surveying um, at work. So uh, when, when Sarah talks about a systems change approach, it's also about, you know, we introduce a new type of ship in an industry that typically uses traditional ships we introduce a new type of 
profession into an industry where typically they don't really focus on that sustainability. So it's changing the way in which the industry works in regarding to sustainability from a training and also from a ship uh, building and operating perspective. Uh, this is a photo of a shipyard near Rotterdam in the Netherlands. So we actually are also constructing these ships ourselves. Um, we have various shipbuilding companies involved. So it's very much also about building and developing uh, zero emission uh, ships for, uh, for the future. So then what do DC rangers do? Well, actually that started with carrying out all types of research work into plastic pollution. Uh, we do various monitoring where we look at the effects of climate change uh, on the ocean. And because our ships are cheap, we basically with limited budget, we can do a lot more than traditional uh, organized than traditionally organizations could do uh, with sort of these larger ships. So we're basically getting a lot more capacity out in the ocean. Uh, we also fly with drones, we use underwater cameras, there's all types of monitoring and such that we carry out. Now that's all of that work, training the rangers, having the ships built, um, essentially carrying out all this research, that essentially is our underlying business case that then helps us to restore biodiversity in the ocean. So we're very much at the start now where we have the infrastructure very cost effectively to restore seagrass, restore oyster beds, and, and essentially bring life back into that ocean. And from a climate mitigation perspective, especially because seagrass takes CO2 from the atmosphere and it, it gives off oxygen, that of course has huge potential. Um, and I think if we talk about a green transition, um, of course, it's very important that we have the infrastructure to literally train people in those green jobs and to actually restore the planet, um, you know, and have the resources to do so. So really a whole variety of tasks that our sea rangers carry out, but at the end of the day, that is an underpinning sort of model um, that we then use to, um, yeah, to restore, to restore the, the ocean, the nature in, in, in our oceans. Just the last couple of slides are essentially just to emphasize that all of this work is made possible because we work with governments, with national governments. Uh, on this photo you see we signed the first agreement with the Dutch environment minister but actually the minister for economic affairs and for social affairs and maritime affairs all four of them signed our first agreement and in other countries in the, in the UK in South Africa but also in Norway where we're in talks with the government there is such strong potential for essentially better protecting that ocean it's an environmental impact but there is an attached social impact you know, if the protection of nature can create jobs, then of course we're having a very different conversation. So in 2018, when we actually started to be operational, it was only a couple of years ago. Now there's a number of countries, including Norway, where people are saying, you know, this has real benefits um, and we want to implement this model here. So it was actually Ashoka that introduced us to a number of other uh, partners, including PwC and IKEA, who assisted us entirely pro bono to develop a franchising model to now scale and replicate this model to other countries, including Norway. Um, and it's amazing to see how essentially that impact that we made in the Netherlands, that that model is then used to essentially replicate that impact in other parts of the world. And I would say Ashoka is really the only network that has the, yeah, the scope and the experience to be able to help facilitate such a process. Um, and then, you know, me and, and our organization and our team are just one example, um, as was previously mentioned, of you know over three and a half thousand fellows that in all different fields um, actually massively scale their impact in this way. Finally, I think you know we are social entrepreneurs, and I would say that, especially from my perspective, working to protect the planet, working on a green innovation, uh, it is so incredibly important that there is that human element to it, that there is that social impact, that we make a difference to the lives of young people. Um, while they, you know, and enable them to make a difference to the world around them. So um, I think with Ashoka as well, it's always, yes, it is about people and planet, um, but it is definitely that, that that sort of, you know, ambition for all of us to make sure that socially we can make that difference, um, you know, that binds us as a community. And at least when I, you know, get government officials or investors to meet our sea rangers on the ship, I don't have to explain anything. When they see the enthusiasm in, you know, in the eyes of these young sea rangers, they're they're sold, and you know they understand what what's happening. Um, so I think, with that said, it's you know um, at least for me, Ashoka has made um, a huge difference in essentially helping us get an idea to implementation, to realization, um, and ultimately helping us scale that uh, that impact globally. Mm -hmm.